you know, I really, really, really hate offsides. Let's kick some mofobo. What is going on, my beautiful people? My name is Neil Villapiano, and welcome to Mofobo, the show with hot takes and even hotter picks. I got a question for you. How many times have you heard this? Your team has the ball or the puck, and they take it into the offensive zone. They make a nice couple of passes. Your boy takes a shot, and he scores, and you're fired up. Let's go. We got the lead. Hold on. It's being called for offsides. Now they're challenging the play. What is offsides? What is determined to be offsides? This, that, everything, all this crazy nonsense. They come back five minutes later and the refs wave it off. No goal. Oh. Today we're going to be talking about why I think that the offsides rule in sports is without a doubt the dumbest rule ever invented in the history of modern sports. Now, the two biggest sports that use the term offsides, and it has been a term for a lot of controversy, is soccer and hockey. There is offsides in football, but at least that is somewhat half decent of a rule. But let me read you the definition of what the rule in soccer is for offsides. According to the soccer rule book, a player is in an offsides position if he is nearer to his opponent's goal line than both the ball and the second to last opponent. A violation will occur when he is in an offsides position, previous bullet points, whatever that means, at the same time the ball is being passed forward to him. Nobody gets that. Not even the people who watch this sport on a daily basis understand that. That makes literally no sense. Now, let's use the hockey version of offsides. A player is judged to be offsides if both of their skates completely cross the blue line, dividing their offensive zone from the neutral zone before the puck completely crosses the same line. Okay. If any individual player is in an offsides position, their entire team is offsides. Guys, even in hockey, nobody understands what offsides is. The amount of times that I have watched a soccer game or a hockey game where an offsides has been made and it's blatantly obvious that it wasn't has been ridiculous. And nobody understands really what the definitive ter- you know, name of this rule is and what it actually means. And this is the thing that is so unbelievably frustrating. Do you understand how complicated that sounds? People who play and watch these sports don't even know what the rule really is. I mean, we have rules in place where people can challenge these things, especially in hockey now. In the NHL, You can challenge it for offsides. And it's I've seen it happen where the they have a whole sequence in the offensive zone that takes about five or six minutes. Somebody finally scores, and then they decide to review it and they wave it off for no goal. And then they have to go back in time to freaking redo the whole five minutes because there was no stoppage in play. I mean, to me, this is the dumbest thing. And I know that there are a lot of purists out there that want to say. Well, Neil, it's a way to make it more competitive so that people are not cherry picking. So, you know what? Here in the United States, we're all about high scores. We're all about guys putting the ball or pucking the back of the net, having big, you know, leads like six to five, you know, seven to nine or whatever the case may be. We want to see goals. We want to see a lot of scoring. We don't want to see one nil or one nothing or two to one because unless you're a purist, That type of game doesn't excite you if you're a regular sports fan. That's the thing that's frustrating about it. And this rule has been changed so many times as to what's definitive to offsides. And a lot of the time, the offsides is about this much. Do you see that? This freaking much. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Now, 
I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, well, where did this offsides rule come from? Well, let's start with the British, with where the offsides rule in soccer or football, depending on where you are in this world, came from. The Scottish football, I guess you'd say, or they call it the Scottish FA, urged the change from a three player to a two player offsides rule as early as 1893. Nobody in this world is still alive from 1893, in case you were wondering. Such a change was first proposed at a meeting of IFAB in 1894, where it was rejected. It was proposed again by the SFA in 1902 upon the urging of Celtic FC, and again rejected. They should have remained rejected. They should have never decided years later to then go, oh, okay, let's put an offsides rule in. They should have kept it rejected for the rest of time. They should have absolutely kept it that way. If you do that, we'd have a lot more exciting games, and I almost guarantee you that soccer would be much more popular, especially in the United States, if that rule didn't exist. You have a major soccer league in the United States in Major League Soccer, and they want to follow all the British rules. That's why nobody takes them seriously here in the United States. That is why it's not getting as big as it can be. Now, there's also promotion problems that they have, but rules like offsides make it very boring and very frustrating and complicated. And any soccer purist that tries to explain to a regular sports fan what offsides is, they'll immediately want to tune it out and stop watching because it makes no sense. It's not exciting. It's not entertaining. Now, let's talk about how did offsides become a thing in hockey? Well, on December 16th, 1929, the National Hockey League initiated the modern offsides rule. No wonder Santa Claus gave all of them coal for Christmas that year, because even he knew back then that this rule was going to be an absolute joke. It wasn't going to work. And watching hockey games, and I'm a very passionate hockey fan, watching it and the amount of times where your team is already on the offensive zone, but they call the whistle after you're well into the offensive zone for offsides just drives me up the freaking wall. And I ask myself all the time as a rhetorical question, what the hell is offsides? What is determined to be offsides? It really is ridiculous. My whole solution to this in both sports is simply this. You annihilate this rule. You get rid of it. You don't have any trace of it. Because here's the thing. You want to promote the sport? You want to make it more popular? You want to make more money? You want more people to play the sport? Make it exciting. Make it interesting for the regular sports fan. You already have, you know, huge fan bases and diehards in these sports in both soccer and hockey, but you're trying to get more fans to become fans of these sports. All you got to do is be creative. Get older star players to come that people know of, like the Messis and the Ronaldos and the Neymars and the Ibrahimoviches of the world. You know, Make these hockey players be more active on social media and do other things like that and eliminate rules that are way too complicated and way too 1800-ish, you know, so that people in this country can actually watch these games and not have to worry about complicated, stupid rules. And that goes for every sport in America, baseball and football as well, and basketball. There are dumb rules in all of them, but to me, Offsides is without a doubt the dumbest rule I have ever seen and heard of and have basically observed with my own eyes in my entire life. And I know I'm not the only one out there that agrees that agrees with this. It's true. It's obvious. If you remove that rule, more goals are going to happen. It's going to be more exciting, more interesting for the regular sports fan. I'm not talking about the purists. And I'm, but I'll tell you this right now: there are purists in both soccer and hockey that would love to see that rule be removed because they also want it to be more exciting. I'm just telling you like it is. And now you know a little bit more and you're a little bit smarter. So there you go. Now it's time for the kicking Mofovo picks of the week. So obviously these picks are going to be for the upcoming weekend. So let's start with the NBA. There's a couple of good games 
on Saturday, but the one that I'm keeping my eye on is the game between the Dallas Mavericks, led by Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis against the Brooklyn Nets. Now, we don't know if Kevin Durant will be available for that game, but we know that most likely James Harden and Kyrie will be there with the rest of their squad. And that's going to be a good game. But I got to be honest with you, the Brooklyn Nets have been rolling, coming off a 5-0 West Coast road trip, kicking Mofobo against some of the best teams in the Western Conference and in the NBA. And I have them dominating this one, coming away with a 20-plus point victory. You can book it right now. Go to the track, go to wherever you got to go, and put your money down that the Nets are going to win by 20-plus against the Mavericks on Saturday. Now let's shift to the NHL. Hockey. You know, there's also a couple of really good games, but the one that I'm keeping my eye on and that a lot of hockey fans are going to be keeping their eye on is a matchup between two of the top players in the NHL, and that is Austin Matthews of the Toronto Maple Leafs and Connor McDavid of the Edmonton Oilers. And I got a couple of picks for this one. First, give me the Maple Leafs to beat the Oilers by at least two goals. I think the goaltending of the Oilers is suspect. I think the Maple Leafs are starting to kick Absolute mofobo after blowing a four-goal lead last week against the hapless Ottawa Senators. And also, give me Austin Matthews to get at least two points. It could be two goals. It could be two assists. It could be a goal and an assist, whatever you want to put down. But put down that the Maple Leafs are going to win by at least two goals, and Austin Matthews will have at least a two-point night. And now we'll shift to college basketball. Folks, we're very, very close to March Madness, but we already still have a couple of really good matchups to kind of finish off the regular season. This one is going to be between number nine, Iowa, and number four, Ohio State. This could be a matchup that we could see down the road. Hell, maybe even in a national tournament if things go the way that everybody wants them to go. But I have the Iowa Hawkeyes, led by arguably the best player in college basketball, Luca Garza, beating the Buckeyes by at least eight points. And Garza will have a 20-point, 10-plus rebound double-double in that victory. And last, and this is the first time I've ever done this, we have college football to talk about a little bit. Yes, a lot of the football conference schools, the FCS, ended up deciding to play some of their games or basically all of their games in the spring. So they have like a five, six game schedule, most of them. And the biggest matchup that I saw going into this weekend is between James Madison and Robert Morris. Now, James Madison won their home opener 52 to nothing. For Robert Morris, this is their first game of the season. How do I think this is going to go? Give me the Dukes to win by at least 30 points. I think the offense of James Madison, a team that just a year and change ago was in the national championship game, I think they're just going to kick absolute mofobo. They're going to be cooking with gas. They're going to be marching up up and down the field all game long. And I think Robert Morris is going to have a lot of difficulty staying with them. So put down that the Dukes of James Madison are going to end up beating Robert Morris by at least 30 points. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your kicking mofobo picks of the week. And by the way, if you can't bet in any of the states, particularly here in New Jersey, the home of mofobo, then you, my friend, are going to be in deep trouble. And if I find out that you are betting in a place where betting is not fully legal yet, I'm going to find you and kick your mofobo. With that being said, that'll do it for this edition of mofobo. Thank you guys, as always, for checking out these videos. I do greatly appreciate it. We post new videos every single Friday right here on YouTube. Continue to be the awesome people that you are. And everybody out there, kick some mofobo.